This is Carla, and you have reached my floss tube channel, Carla Being Crafty, where I talk mostly about cross stitch, but also about other crafts and a little bit of life info and um, all kinds of stuff. I do a video once a week. I've been trying to do that, and this is my video number 10. Um, it is September 1st on Sunday. Um, happy Labor Day to anybody who is in the United States and is able to celebrate that with a three-day weekend. Um, I do have off work tomorrow, so I'm really happy about that. And I've been trying to um, take advantage of the three-day weekend to get some crafting done. And um, tomorrow I have, you know, house chores and stuff to do. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying my three-day weekend. And I'm glad to be able to come here and share it with you. Um, this is my 10th video. I don't know if I said that already, but this is video number 10 and I've been doing floss tube for two months. Um, I started on June 20, June 29th, I believe. So yeah, so I've been doing this for 10, for, uh, t two months now and, um, I'm just having a, oops great time <laughs> I'm doing it you guys don't need to see my messy counters back there um, anyway so let's get started um, I thought I would give you guys just a little bit of update on my mom and her cross stitching um, as I told you last week I took her to the stitchy weekend with me um, last weekend and she had expressed an interest to try and start cross stitching um, she'd already knew how to stitch my mom did needlepoint and um, cruel embroidery at a very high level she actually taught it um, but she hasn't done any kind of needlework for a really long time. She has some mobility issues with her hands and neuropathy issues where she gets a lot of pain in her hands. So it was a challenge to see if she would be able to do it. Um, I am happy to report that she is hooked. <laughs> she did have some um, challenges this week, which I think that we have addressed. So we'll just have to see if it's something that she can continue to do. Um, she started out using monk's cloth and a really, really huge needle. Um, she was having problems because she was dropping the needle a lot. Um, just, you know, as she would make the stitch, it would slip out of her fingers. And when she would drop it, she either couldn't find it or couldn't reach it. So that was an issue, um, which she solved by deciding to, um, instead of doing a loop start with her double thread and having the loop at this end away from the needle, she decided to double her thread and actually put the needle through the loop. So the needle is in essence attached to the stitching and um, you know it makes it harder to uh, to frog out any mistakes but if she drops the needle then it's still attached so that was solved um, she started out using monk's cloth um, and just was having trouble with it because the the threads in it were just kind of loosey-goosey and um, it was very easy to split those stitches so even though the cloth and the holes were bigger than the um, 11 count Ada I got um, she decided to try the 11 count Ada. Um, in using that, she had to go down to a smaller needle. That didn't seem to be a problem, especially since she had started using this method to kind of attach the needle. Um, although the needle that I have is actually tight even for that. So I did, um, I got her a package of, oops. Oh, I just tore the package apart. Anyway, I got her a package of other needles. Um, I don't know if these are thinner, but we'll try them out. And um, I think they have a little bit more of, they're still blunt, but they have more of a point on the bottom, so I think they might be easier for her to use. Um, so she is really loving it. Um, so we'll see. You know, she's been enjoying herself and stitching a lot and getting kind of hooked on it, as we all do, um, to where it's harder, hard for her to put it down. Um, but again, she she does deal with neuropathy in her hands and just gets pain after a while. And when that happens, then she really, she has to take some medicine and, you know, and, uh, and it's very difficult to her, for her to stitch when her hands are in that much pain. But, you know, she, she's loving it. So I will give you updates and, um, if she ever finishes the thing that she's doing, then I'll bring it on here and show you guys. But she's having a good time. So that is the whole point, right? Um. Okay, um, so I have tried to make it a point to do some shout outs on my channel of uh, floss tubers I'm watching. I have a huge list now, and I have to say that 
the last couple days I haven't watched it very much so I feel like I'm hugely behind because it's like everybody posted yesterday so I have like feels like a thousand plus two videos to watch um, this evening and tomorrow <laughs> I guess that's what's gonna be on all day tomorrow um, but a couple people that I started watching that are brand new um, sort of brand new uh, Stephanie from Stitch Goes My Heart um, she is not new. I guess she had a channel with a friend and they decided to split and do separate videos. So she has her first two videos posted and um, she seems lovely. Um, I watched both of her first two videos. She's very enthusiastic. Um, I think, I could be mistaken, but I think she's part of like the the Northwest people who go to Acorns and Threads. So she knows that whole group. Um, and it's, I feel like I watch almost all of you guys and, um, and I feel left out. I've actually looked at the train schedule to see like, gee, if I wanted to take a trip to go up to like Portland and go to Acorns and Threads and it would be, it would take a whole day to get there and cost over a hundred dollars for one way. So I really want to be a part of you guys, but I just don't think I can do that. <laughs> but I don't know if anybody wants to send me a train ticket, I'll come. <laughs> um... And then uh, the 911 Stitcher, she's only had one video so far. She is in Southern California. In fact, she said her husband, her husband is a police officer or a police investigator. I'm not sure exactly what. She said he does, um, like, bad, I don't know, crimes or accidents or something like that. So it's like, she's like, you don't want to be involved with my husband in his official capacity because it's never good. Um, but he works in Anaheim where I live. And she used to work in Anaheim, um, but she lives, I, th I don't know, in Corona or something like that now. So she, I think, is part of the Southern California Stitchers. And um, so eventually I might get to see her at a retreat or a stitching day or something like that. Um, but, and I, I'm sorry, her, her name is escaping me, but it's 911 Stitcher and I'll link everything below. And so she just started her first video and um, she's very interesting to listen to. She has a lot of, of interesting life stuff to share and you know and her stitching of course is as lovely as well so those are the two people that um, I am shouting out this week if you have a floss tube channel um, and I haven't mentioned you then please leave me a comment and and tell me go watch my videos I mean I'm not offended I try and be kind of subtle when I go on somebody's and I leave a message like I just started one hint hint but don't be subtle with me say go watch my videos I think you'll find them interesting and I promise I will go watch and then um, I will try and put you on my list to shout you out um, I don't know how much influence I have but um, but I doesn't matter we're all supposed to be in this together so anyway um finishes oh my god you guys this week I had finishes. I had finishes. I finished the project that I have been talking about since my very beginning of my channel for my best friend Tracy. I finished the Vino Bianco to go along with the Vino Rosso. So these are going to get put in the mail on Tuesday along with her um, little sachet I made for her. And there you go. Um, I signed this one, and I couldn't find a place to sign this one, so I figured since they're going to be together that that would be sufficient. Um, I'm a little embarrassed because, as I said before, I'm sending them to her raw, you know, no framing, nothing, because she wants to be able to do that herself since um, she has really specific uh, needs as far as where she's putting them. Um, but that means she's going to be able to see the backs. So I'm going to show them publicly so everybody sees them. They're a little messy. I think it's the nature of this type of kit um, because there's a lot of color changes plus the beading. So you have, yeah, so you have threads skipping everywhere. But um, I think they came out really nice. Um, they were fun to do for the most part. Um, and I'm so glad that I'm going to be able to have a little tiny, tiny bit of me in my friend's home. And, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about that. And I also finished my Black Cat birthday sal that I did for the month of August for my birthday. And um, I finished actually her and the Vino Bianco on the same day, on Wednesday. So I had a very prolific evening. And I was sick, so... Um, <laughs> So I did this with a temperature. 
So this is Nora Corbett's um, Red Kitten. Um, oops. Okay. Now, I did make just a, two small changes to this. Well, I, I chose my own threads, first of all. I just looked at the colors that she was using, and I used Needle Necessities for the red and the skin. Um, the cat is Black Whisper, like it was called for. Um, down here, this was supposed to be White Whisper. Um, I decided to use a silver gray sort of whisper instead because I kind of wanted to take it out of the realm of looking really like um, Mrs. Claus. And um, I know that there's a whole series of these with the red dresses and an and a animal or presents or something. And they were done kind of like as a Christmas series. Um, obviously, I'm doing just the one. And I didn't want it to look Christmas. So I decided to do this a little bit silvery instead. And then I added, um, this is DMC uh, Sparkle Floss in two, there's actually two shades of red. And I used one strand of each just to make these little stitches that, you know, I kind of wanted to look like, you know, a feather bow where there's the big feathers that stick out. So I kind of made it look like that, I think. And so I added that little touch. And um, I have a frame here for her. I'm going to try and frame it. My, well, I am going to frame it myself. Um, the success of which we will find out. I will show it to you uh, next week or the week after whenever I get it framed. And... So she is going to go on my wall in a frame, place of pride, um, as my first black cat birthday sale for 2019. And yeah, I just kind of want to keep holding her up and staring at her because I really love her. So those are my finishes this week. Uh, my cross stitch finishes. I do have something else to show you a little bit later in the video. Um, And so I thought that, um, so the 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic that, um, I talked to you guys about at the beginning of the month or the end of last month, I did pretty well on it. Um, I think I was a little bit, not, I don't want to say overly ambitious, but I put more whips on here than I was truly working on because I kind of found my, my groove in, um, I kind of found my groove in, uh, working on two and three or four whips a week and focusing on that to actually make progress. And so I had stuff on here that, you know, one, two, three, four. So there's 10 acrostic, uh, 10 letters in the acrostic and I kind of had a different whip for each one. And some of these, I just really didn't work on this, this month. Um, but if you take those off and put in other things that fit, I, I pretty much finished it. Um, as I've mentioned, I'm not super great on challenges like this. I mean, I like them and I'm interested in kind of setting it up, but then actually committing to, you know, committing to it and um, completing it. Yeah, that's not my, it, it just doesn't work that great for me. Um, I did print out the, um, the September one. And again, I'm going to try and do it. I haven't filled out anything yet. Um, it's uh, Shorter Days is the the one for September. Um, but I'm kind of using it as a guide, not a commitment. And I am still stitching like pretty much every day. I didn't stitch yesterday, but that's because I was sewing. So you'll see the results of that a little bit later in the video. But... Um, yeah, so I'm using it as a guide, and I mean, since this is like a game that you're playing with yourself, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, I do enjoy finishing and checking it off, but if I get to one and I'm actually working on something else instead, it doesn't matter. Um, maybe what I should do is pick a focus piece that I'm working on that month and see if I can plug it into everything, and then knowing that if I'm working on that all month that I will complete it. But anyway, so those are my plans for that uh, acrostic type thing. Um, oh, the other thing that um, I did participate in this whole month, except I missed yesterday, which was uh, day 31 um, 
uh, stitchy friends that you got through Common Thread and Stitcher. And, you know, I would have a really hard time answering that anyway. I'm going to have to think about it. Uh, there's so many people that I met through Common Thread and Stitcher and then on the Floss Tube comments as well. And they kind of overlap, so I'm not sure who. But there are definitely people that I now um, follow more closely, I guess is the right way to say it. You know, I'm following multiple people but there's certain people when they pop up it's like oh you know that's George or that's that's Nicole or that you know so the people that I kind of have met um through both Common Thread Stitcher and my floss tube um but one of the uh one of the things last week one of the the prompts was about scissors your favorite scissors your scissor stash or something like that and I noticed people were putting out pictures of, of their their scissor stashes, which, you know, some of them, there's a lot. Almost everybody had a short shaped scissor. And so, of course, that made me curious why. And I put the question out there and nobody answered it, you know, and like, everybody's probably thinking, why don't you Google it yourself? So I did. I Googled it myself on why embroidery scissors often, so often are stork shaped. So I thought I would tell you guys in case anybody else has that kind of uh, curiosity as well. Um, so what it stems from is that midwives, uh, originally midwives were also the ones who did a lot of embroidery and cross stitch and midwives had these stork shaped clamps that they used, um, to clamp off the umbilical cord after they delivered a baby. And there was some manufacturer who, because it was made for, you know, this clamp was made for midwives who were birthing babies, uh, made it into a stork shape. And it, this, the point, the, the scissor part, um, was the clamp and it was, you know, it was shaped different, whatever, cause it had a different purpose. But midwives were the ones who used them. They were also the ones who traditionally did a lot of embroidery. So those clamps kind of merged into scissors and the stork shape came from the fact that it was midwives who were using them. So midwives birth, birth stork. That's why we have stork shaped scissors. And it's just been a holdover from, you know, um, the 1800s. Yeah. So that's where the storks come from. It comes from birth and babies. Okay. So I hope, uh, I find that kind of stuff interesting. So, um, you know, I get these questions and then, you know, I have to go look it up at our meeting, our stitching meeting, uh, Last week, um, one of the ladies, Ruth, she's a bit of a, of a stitching historian, and she she was talking about how Ada was born in the 80s, and it was actually, I found it really fascinating. So, yeah, so I guess it was the partner of um, uh, Pat Carson, you know, Car Pat Carson's favorite needle. Her partner, they had a, a store together or something. Anyway, her partner was the one who actually ended up developing Ada or requesting uh, manufacturers to develop it for stitchers because cross stitch is starting to become um, more in this, in you know in fashion in the 80s. So that's where that comes from too. Um, okay, so I have quite a few uh, new starts, um, and, and well, actually one whip because the other whips were completed. Um, and then the rest are all new starts. So I worked a little bit more on the Lion of Judah Needlepoint that I started on my birthday. Um, this one is with silk and fancy floss. And um, so I did a little bit of the blue. I kind of wanted to use the other color and I started doing this little specialty stitch. And um, yeah, the silks are really nice to work with. So when I get done with this, I don't know, maybe I'll see if I can order a little bit of silk and do a project with silk. Um, I forgot, you know, in the couple months I've been doing this, that I really enjoy doing needlepoint too. So, um, and I'd never done one on a frame before, and I like it. Now, I don't know what it would be like if you're doing a big one, having it, you know, I don't think I'd like holding a huge frame, and I'm not going to invest in any kind of stand or anything like that. Um, but I might you know, once this is done, start another small needlepoint project and uh, also do it on a frame. But, so that is that whip. And I only, I only worked on that one evening just for like a couple hours. Not, I don't even think it was a couple hours, but, um, but yeah, I enjoyed doing that. So my other three are, um, three new starts. 
um, that uh, I've talked about two of them. This is the third one. So I got this little pattern from Erin to Martini Stitcher. It was part of the birthday present package that she gave me. And um, I just liked it because, you know, we're getting into fall and it has the pumpkins and I just thought it would be fun to do something a little bit folly that was little that I could kind of put with my, my Nevermore. So um, I'm not very far on that. Just started that pumpkin. And I pulled... I pulled flosses for it from, um, these are the overdyed flosses mostly that I got, uh, from eBay, um, and the Etsy shop, and I, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name, but it is in a couple episodes back, um, yeah, so I just pulled colors that kind of match the colors that were on it, um, and started that one. Then I did, I started um, Froth and Bubble. This is the Long Dog Sampler. And I am participating in a sal with um, uh, Carolyn Zook, I think, is the one who, who has started it. Um, it is hashtag Long Dog Sal. So it's any Long Dog Sampler pattern. Um, and I think. Uh, Carla from Rolodex Stitcher is also doing this one, um, which uh, I think I enabled her. I think she saw it on my channel and went and ordered it. So um, this is Froth and Bubble, and I am doing it on a white Opal Ada, and this is like really, really stiff fabric. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. It's hard to get in the hoop, um, but I think it looks really pretty, so... I don't have very much of a start, but I did start it. That is the Black Cat Needle Minder that Erin uh, sent me, and it is a uh, needle minder that you can get from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. And um, it's really cute. It's very detailed. It's like, it, it's funny. It almost is like, oh, this cat's watching me while I'm stitching. <clears throat> And that um, is actually, I'm using the called for general art sampler threads, except for the Raven. I, I'm just using DMC 310 for the Raven. Um, I did get one skein of Raven, Raven to see, like, oh, if I really needed it. Um, and, you know, I mean, it did have a little bit of, like, a green variation in it. I just didn't think that it was, it made enough difference to spend that difference in price because it called for 10 skeins of of that floss and when you're looking at a difference between 56 cents a skein and like two dollars and forty cents a skein um yeah that's a big difference so so i decided to go ahead and just do the dmc for that um but i am using the other big color that was called for was um the patriotic blue and um that i think i needed five skeins or something but i did go ahead and get that um so this is my first time using the gentle arts uh, sampler threads and so far it's okay um they like immediately tangled on me the first piece I used but I'm trying not to be um <laughs> prejudiced because that first piece um so far I have to say that my favorite over dyes that I have used is the needle necessities slash thread works um I'm just I love those so I think that they were my first that I got um, the first ones I got obviously were older flosses because they're they're needle necessities but I know that Threadworks you can get the same colors and um, so I think that they got a little place in my heart as far as my favorite ones and we'll see if that changes as time goes on but so far those those are my favorites um, and then the last thing I started was my Winnie the Pooh that I did start on the 29th which was my dad's birthday and um, this is the one that I had the not hot debate exactly going, <laughs> but the question about what color floss I should use for the balloon. The consensus seems to be blue. Um, most of the people said blue. Um, blue was actually what I was going towards as well. Um, these were the three, the three colors: the blue, blue, green, and purple. 
and they're all three gorgeous flosses. Um, I had a couple people vote for the purple. Uh, one person, I think, said green. Everybody else said blue. And I was kind of leaning towards the blue anyway. Um, so blue it will be. Oops, hold on, I just dropped my black. Oh, sorry, that shot in my head. Um, the day before that I started doing this, I counted my, my fabric. This piece of fabric is huge. But this pattern is so large that I actually, um, I was going to have like no, no play at all. Um, so what I'm actually doing is I'm cutting out the first 20 rows, which, um, so on the picture I'm cutting out like this little strip. So it's going to take off this one B and then the balloon is going to start closer to the edge. And even doing that, I only have like an inch or less on each side. So um, I'm not going to be able to frame this or anything like that. I think that I think it's going to look better as a wall hanging anyway. So um, that's what I'm going to have to do though. So as you can see, I just start on the black. I think I'm going to do actually the whole outline of the black balloon and then fill it in. Um, so this is kind of going to be more of a relaxing stitch, a little bit mindless. And because I'm using an over dyed, I'm going to, I'm going to do it like this, you know, like, like around and back and around and back. So that, the, that's how the, the variation goes. So that doesn't look like I got a lot done, but that was an evening's worth of work. And I mean, this is a huge piece of fabric. So that tells you how big this is going to be, you know? So the balloon's probably going to go to here, and then you still have to have all this, this over on the side because then poo is, is offset from the balloon. So and I didn't want to lose like the end of his foot, so that's why I cut this off here, and it's just going to fit. So. <clears throat> so I have. Those three pieces to focus on this month, and then I'm also going to, um, I definitely, definitely want to work on the project for my brother. I'm not pulling out showing you because I didn't work on it this past week. Um, and then I also have the Glendon Place. So those, those five pieces um, are what I'm going to focus on. And um, yeah, I don't know if I'm going to work on all five every week. But those are the ones I want to put my hands on this month. Okay. So, when we get to haul and stuff, um, I didn't really have any that much cross-stitch haul this week. Um, I put out a little extra video that you guys can watch. I got two books um, from eBay. So, the first one was this, The Magic of the Forest in Cross-Stitch and Watercolor. Um, and I did kind of a flip through of it um, on this extra video and just showed a lot of the um, the beautiful stuff that's in here. Uh, so I encourage you, if you didn't see that, go back and watch it. Um, I got this book for under $5, free shipping on eBay. Um, I don't know how many are left. When I looked before I did that video, there were at least five copies. At different prices, um, it went up as high as 17 but there were ones that were in the $7 range. Um, I do know a couple of people watched the video said that they were going to go look for it, so I don't know what's left. But um, I went on eBay after that, and I was kind of at the end of the month, so I didn't have the funds, but I just kind of did uh, used books cross-stitch. And there's a lot of stuff that you can get on there if you just keep an eye out. Um, I also got this book. This one was $3.00 the artful ribbon and it's just it's ribbon embroidery honestly I don't know if I'll ever do this but it is so pretty and I'm kind of like a sucker for flowers and stuff I don't know you guys may have already uh, have figured that out um yeah I don't again I don't know if I'll ever do any of these things but I really like having the book I like looking at it I like thinking about maybe doing it and um, so this is a, a nice book for me to get, again, for $3 on eBay. Um, so other than those two things, uh, the, the crafty stuff that I spent my money on this past couple weeks has been at Joann's, um, getting fabric and stuff to make project bags. 
So, <laughs> um, I fell down that rabbit hole a little bit. Um, I uh, did use as my guide two videos from Nicole on Darvana Lee Design Studios. Um, she's in Australia and she just started a floss tube channel. I did talk about that last week, but she has a channel that she's had for quite a while with all kinds of quilting and other tutorials, so sewing type stuff. So I, um, she had one video for a small project bag using lace zippers. Um, and I was really attracted to that because the zipper's on the outside and the zipper becomes the decoration. And then she just recently put up a video to make these little coin purse things using, um, the clothes is a, a plastic snap and I went on to, to Amazon and was really pleasantly surprised for $17 I think it was I could get that set of plastic snaps plus the applicator tool and everything and um, so I went ahead and get, got those so my plan is is was is um, to make project bags um, and then to make two matching little pouches to go inside the project bags, one kind of long and skinny for floss, and one um, little square one that can hold whatever, hold the scissors, hold extra needles, hold whatever stuff so stuff isn't flopping around in my plastic uh, project bags. I use, I mean, you guys have seen, I use these. Um, I don't have any fancy project bags. Well, now I do, because I made some. But um, I've just been using these, and I do like these. Um, but I do have a little bit of a problem with the plastic. There's been some debate online and in different flash tubes about whether the plastic or the vinyl is good next to your flosses and your fabric. Um, and I kind of like the idea of having a fully fabric uh, project bag. Um, as far as being able to see through it, I don't have enough projects going that I need to worry about that. Like, I'm going to know what's in what. Um, so, I got stuff at um, Joann's over the week and then I went yesterday and got a little bit more um, so I have a lot of fabric to make a bunch of different project bags um, I came home yesterday and did cutting I cut out the fabric for six six sets that took me forever Nicole doesn't even show the cutting because you know I mean she's talking to quilters and people who for the most part are familiar with fabric and you know so she already has her her pieces cut that was probably the hardest thing for me was cutting out the stupid fabric first of all I don't have very much space to work with so trying to fit everything into my small little space you know and dealing if I got a larger piece of fabric then that was a little bit challenging and I did find later when I went to go sew stuff that um, I was not necessarily straight in all my cutting and not everything matched and so that was a little bit of a hassle for me. It also took a really long time. Um, I, I, in fact, I overdid yesterday because I went out shopping in the morning. Um, I'm not, I mean, I don't talk about it here. I have really bad back problems and knee problems. So um, for me to go when I go shopping, by the end of walking around a store, I'm in a lot of pain. And um, yeah, so I went to two stores yesterday. I went to Joann's and then I had to stop at the grocery store. So by the time I got home, I was already like, you know, hurting. And then I sat down and I cut out fabric for another couple hours. And then I started sewing and I finished one set. And by that time, and I also forgot to eat. So I was like, not feeling great because of that. So by that time, my back was hurting. I sat down, I had something to eat. I rested a little bit and then I got up and I did another set. That was probably a mistake because I was already tired and in pain and my second set of project bags is not as good as the first set because I think I was just not paying attention and rushing. So I realized that if I'm going to sew, I have to have all my faculties with me and not, not overdo. But I still want to show you what I did. Um, now I changed the measurements a little bit. Of course I can never follow instructions completely. So I did change all the measurements a little bit. Um, the, the tutorial that Nicole did, she made kind of a square project bag and she started out with a piece of, I think 10, 10 and a half by 20 and ended up kind of with a square project bag. Um, I wanted my project bags to be bigger. Um, so I, I, or wider. So I did 14 by 20. Uh, on most of them sometimes I, some of them I had to cut 14 by 18 because I was using a fat quarter and if it's a directional fabric so I, I came across a bunch of different challenges so some of them I did 
13 by 20, some I did 14 by 18. So I ha I'm gonna end up with different sizes and I think I actually need to cut bigger pieces to start um, even than I did because I am not as good with my seaming, making it really small, like eighth of an inch turns into quarter of an inch and yada yada. So, <laughs> um, but I mean the ones I got are I think good. So my first set is this um, uh, flamingos. So I've got my three pieces here. The main piece is this flamingo bag with the zip that works. Oops, of course I say that and then it sticks. Um, and then the fabric inside is just like a purple. Um, it's really cute, don't you think? Now this is a directional fabric, so they're upside down on the back. I, I It doesn't matter for me. Um, but, and then a little matching. This is the floss bag. So yeah, it won't work for like, you know, like a hay type project where you have a ton of floss, but for little floss, I mean for a couple skeins, it will work. And I just used a pink to line. So this is the, the lining fabric and then I just had a pink plain one to line that. And the snaps are like so cool and so easy to do. So I'll show you those. Um, and then this is a little notions pouch that matches with the purple fabric on the inside. But seriously, you guys, I mean, I am not a sewer and these are not, sorry about that. Um, my phone lost memory and I had to do some zhuzhing to get it to record again. But anyway, I was talking about my project bags that um, I used the tutorials on Darvana Lee, Divine Studios. Um, I think I was showing you this one. And then the other one, the other set that I um, did yesterday, this is the project bag. And again, this is when I was overly tired. I shouldn't have done it. Um, it is not as well made. Um, it's got this really cute paw print fabric on the inside. But I love this fabric. I got this from an eBay shop. Just a fat quarter. Um, and then these are the matching little guys using that paw print. So I love, I love it, even though it's not as well made. Um, but they were actually surprisingly easy to do for somebody who really isn't a sewer. The hardest part, honestly, was cutting the fabric for me. That took the longest time. Um, so if you're interested in doing them, I definitely suggest going on to her website and looking for those two, those two, uh, tutorials. And then, um, I, my, this is the ultimate size that I would like to get. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out what size fabric I need to cut in order to get it this wide. Um, but the, um, the zippers I got really long ones um, I got these on Amazon it was a pack of 20 or 40 I can't remember for under $20 um, and I like the way it looks you know doing the top stitching so you don't have to set the zipper or anything um, and it adds that decorative element so I cut out aside from the two the two sets I did I cut up uh, four other sets um, so I'm going to try and get those done this weekend and then I have more fabric that I purchased um, to make some other ones, and but I ran out of the, the interfacing and the fusible fleece, so I need to get some of that, and then I can continue to make more. Um, I'm just loving them for myself. As I said, I don't have any project bags um, other than the plastic ones, um, and um, and they're really expensive. I, totally worth it. I'm not... I'm not disparaging anybody who makes them. They are 100% worth it because of the, the the skill and the time involved in making them, but they're just not worth it money-wise for me to spend that much. I'd rather spend that much and get a bunch of supplies so that I can make multiple project bags and make them myself, which is what I'm doing. So, um, but I had a good time doing it. So really go on to Nicole's site and, um, uh, Check it out if you're interested. This is the set of the plastic uh, snaps, and it came it came with the tool. Oops. Oh, sorry. 
came with the tool, the awl, um, so everything that you need, and it was really easy to do. I thought it was going to be hard to set those snaps. It was like such a piece of cake, and now I want to like put snaps on everything. So, um, yeah, so the last thing we have to do is um, I had set, uh, last week I said I was going to do a giveaway of these two Catitude patterns from Raise the Roof. Um, now, I was mistaken in my belief that with the um, random comment generator thing that you could filter it for multiple words and you can't. Um, so I'm going to have to do it for everybody. Um, so if you made a comment but weren't interested in winning and you happen to win, then just let me know and then I'll do it again for somebody else. Um, but uh, but oh, one thing though is that my brother did <laughs> make a comment on my last video and if he wins, I'm going to do it again because he has no interest in, in winning any of this stuff. So, uh, so I have my, um, my Chromebook here and I have the uh, YouTube random comment picker up on it and um, I am filtering the duplicate users but I'm not filtering based on comments uh, filtering based on a specific text because um, there wasn't a specific text I didn't tell everybody to say balloon I didn't you know I should have said say balloon but I didn't so that was my my bad I, I thought that I could put multiple words in there and you can't and you could put a phrase but you can't put multiple words um, so anyway now I have to get my YouTube comments, and there's 25 unique comments, and then start the raffle, and it's doing the flashy thing, and the winner is Time to Stitch. So, um, she was, uh, oh, I think this is Sue. Sue, you won! Yay! So actually, she's somebody that I know and I have met. So that's that's exciting. Um, so she met my mom and me last Saturday, and um, yeah. So Sue, send me your address, or let me know if you're going to be at um, the next uh, Stitchy Saturday in Fullerton at Rue de Bogors, because I could bring it to you then. Um, but send me your address, and I can I can stick these in the mail to you. So. Oh, that's exciting. Yay. So that was my first video. I mean, my first giveaway, you guys. <laughs> Two months in and almost 400 subscribers, and I did my first video. So anyway, I've had a really good time with you guys um, these past few months. And uh, please continue to comment. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, yeah, that it, it's really thrilling. And I'm trying to answer everybody's. I'm uh, like a couple days behind. So if you sent me a message in the last couple days, I haven't answered you yet, but I will this afternoon. And, um, anyway, um, yeah, I will see you guys again next, next week. And, um, in the meantime, have a great stitchy week. Have a good day off if you have one tomorrow. Um, do lots of fun stuff, whatever makes you happy. And always remember to be content, be kind, and be crafty. This is Carla. Bye-bye, you guys.